In the description box below, we've included great resources to assist you, including links to our how-to hub. Be sure to check it out often as we are always updating the content. We're going to cover troubleshooting in Zone Director, and we're going to do a number of things. The focus is really going to be around packet captures. We can do those both locally to Zone Director, but we can also do it remotely with Wireshark as well. Before we start, we're going to go through some quick coverage just on some simple troubleshooting steps. A lot of times this stuff can be helpful if you're looking for a specific Mac or if you need to save a snapshot or a capture of troubleshooting that you've done through Zone Director so that you can have that file ready for support at a later time. Before we start packet captures, let's look at the access point and how it's working. We have two individual Wi-Fi interfaces. We have Wi-Fi 0 and Wi-Fi 1. Zero is broadcasting at 2.4 gigahertz, whereas one is five gigahertz. We also have WLAN interfaces. WLAN zero and WLAN one are broadcasting on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, whereas WLAN 33 and 36 are being broadcast at five gigahertz. WLAN zero and WLAN 33 share a common SSID name. That means I'm broadcasting the SSID out of both radios and clients based on compatibility can attach to the correct one. The reason this is important is when we perform a packet capture, we have to capture on individual interfaces. We need to either capture on a 2.4 gigahertz interface, which is Wi-Fi 0, or a 5 gigahertz interface, which is Wi-Fi 1. We also need to capture the WLAN interface, and this is going to be the SSID that our clients are attaching to. So we'll have to capture the radio traffic and the SSID traffic. In our demonstration, our client is a 2.4 gigahertz compatible smartphone, so we will be capturing on Wi-Fi 0. Additionally, we're configured using WPA2 AES authentication within the access points SSIDs. To begin, we're going to take a capture of a wireless client attaching to one of the wireless LANs being broadcast from our access point. Let's navigate to Troubleshooting and Client Connectivity. In the Client MAC Address field, we're going to input the MAC address of the smartphone that we'll be using for this testing example. Once we've entered the MAC address, we'll click on Start under Connectivity Trace, and then we'll use our smartphone to attach to the wireless LAN. Now that our client has connected, let's review the output. 802.11 authentication is our client authenticating to the wireless LAN. The association request happens once the client has determined which access point it would like to connect to. The client then sends the request and the access point will respond. Now that the client is authenticated and associated, it needs another step called the four-way handshake. The four-way handshake is used to establish a pairwise transient key, or PTK for short. This process utilizes EPOL key frames to form the four-way handshake. The final step is our DHCP DORA function. DORA stands for Discover, Offer, Request, and acknowledge. This is the process clients utilize to speak to a DHCP server and receive an IP address dynamically. This will become important later, but 802.11 and four-way traffic on this capture is happening on the Wi-Fi interface of the access point. DHCP traffic is happening on the WLAN interface, and the numbering scheme will differ depending on the configuration that you have built. Now that the troubleshooting output has been captured, we can also export this information. This becomes useful if we want to troubleshoot this issue later or provide it to support. If we try to troubleshoot this issue in the future, we might not see the same behavior, so this allows us to save this excerpt. Once we've clicked the export button, the file is downloaded and placed in our downloads folder. Another useful tool, we can also import captures that we've taken previously if we need to review them at a later time. Here, we're going to click on the drop file here function and go into the download folder and load the capture that we just took previously and import it. This gives us a snapshot of what we exported earlier and we can review this at any time. Now we're gonna take some packet captures. So let's navigate to troubleshooting and diagnostics. Inside of Diagnostics, we're going to scroll down to Packet Capture. We've identified our client as a 2.4 GHz radio client, so we'll select that radio button. 
Next, we're gonna select the access point that the client will be connecting to and add it to the capture APs. Finally, we're gonna use local mode for this capture. So we'll go ahead and click on start. This will start the capture and then pretty briefly, we're gonna stop it. We just wanna show you an example. The length of time in which you'll need to let this run is solely dependent on your issue and your environment. Once we've completed that, we'll click on save. This will download the PCAP file in a zip format to our downloads folder. We can go ahead and open that folder, extract the files. Now a little gotcha in the PCAP folder itself. There's PCAP0 and PCAP1. We're gonna rename those extensions to just PCAP so that we can open them in Wireshark. As previously mentioned, if we double click on the PCAP file, it opens within Wireshark and we can see the traffic that was captured. This can be a very useful tool for any issue in your wireless network that you need to troubleshoot. Now, let's capture traffic directly to Wireshark. So in our packet capture function, we're going to click on streaming mode and then click on start. From here, let's open Wireshark. Within Wireshark, we're going to click on capture and go to options. Here, we're gonna click on the output tab. And the reason we're doing this is as you perform remote captures, file sizes can become very large. So for us to simplify this and make it more manageable, we're going to create a new file every 100 megabytes of packet capture file size. So we'll select megabytes 100 and then select the checkbox. Next, we're gonna create a file name and we're gonna save that locally. For this example, we'll call it zdclient-capture and we can reference that file later. Now let's select the input tab and inside of input, we're gonna select manage interfaces. At the top, we have a remote interfaces tab. We wanna select that. Here, we'll click on the plus sign and we wanna enter a host IP address. The host IP address is going to be the IP address of our access point that is in capture mode. Once we've entered that IP address, we'll select okay. Now we'll see the interface list compile and open. To perform the capture, we're gonna select WLAN zero. This is the wireless LAN or SSID our client is attached to. This is going to show us IP based traffic. Once the capture has begun, we're also going to display a capture of the Wi-Fi Zero radio. This is our 802.11 Wi-Fi traffic. We strongly recommend capturing both when troubleshooting client connectivity issues. It will give you a larger view of the issue at hand. Once traffic is being captured, we're gonna use the display filter within Wireshark to search for items such as MAC addresses, IP addresses, and more. As an example, we'll search our Wi-Fi Zero capture for our WLAN.adder and then the MAC address of the MAC address in question. This will allow us to view our client's connection to the wireless LAN or SSID. Now that we've seen how to display basic connectivity from a client to the wireless LAN, let's look at our WLAN traffic and search for DHCP. Since this is a demonstration, we're gonna use a broad filter and just search for DHCP within our WLAN zero capture. As we can see, the DORA or DHCP discover, offer, request, and acknowledge traffic is displayed. And if we open the DHCP acknowledged frame, we can see the IP address our client received. Further, if we need to continue any active troubleshooting for this single client, we can right click the client MAC address and apply it as a display filter. If we restart our capture, only this specific information will be displayed. It is very important to remember that once we're done actively troubleshooting this issue, that we stop the stream from Zone Director. Everything's completed. We don't want that stream to continue running. Lastly, you can also set an access point to stream from the CLI. Once we've entered the access point CLI, we'll go ahead and enter Git Director to verify the ZD controller we are managed by. Next, we enter git wlan list. This will display all of our wireless LANs or SSIDs so we can select the appropriate one that we want to stream. To begin streaming, as an example, we'll go ahead and type set capture wlan1 stream. This starts the access point in streaming mode. To turn our capture off, we'll enter set capture wlan1 idle. 
Before you go, don't forget to check the description box below and access any of the resources we've provided. Thanks for watching.